Hello, my medium fans! So, today we have a very different deck. We're doing a little bit of a challenge. I'm not necessarily thinking this one's gonna be super competitive, but it is gonna be pretty fun, I think. And we are playing Even Handed Golem, so everything in our deck obviously costs 2, 4, 6, or 8 power. We have to run only evens. And uh, we have some different ideas on it. We're gonna be trying to like return it to our hand to keep using its ability. And we're gonna try and use some ramps so that we can skip from two directly to four and not have to worry about the curve as much. Some interesting little things like that. You can look at the deck tech that is linked down below if you wanna check it out. And while you're there, hey, you can check out my wonderful sponsor, InkGaming.com. Uh, you can see the promo code down below as well. They've got cool custom mouse pads and dice bags and play mats and all kinds of cool things like that that you can get decked out with. And we even have some of our channel art up on there. All right, but I'm gonna jump right on into this. If you wanna hear me too, too long. Uh, we've got Burden Bearer Wisp as another way to just rebuy like some of our come into play abilities like the Tranquil Scholar or the Even Hand Golem when we find it. I think that for now I'm gonna bottom that. I don't actually have any power, so... I mean, we've got the Devotee, we've got the Trailmaker, we could be okay, but... I'd like to make sure that we're curving out here if we can. And yeah, I'm gonna Trailmaker here, pass the turn, and next turn we can do either like a Tranquil Scholar and a Devotee, or like a 4-drop if we draw one. It gives us a bunch of different options. One of the top end cards that we're looking for is going to be Kyphus, so we want to try and like ramp up to Kyphus as soon as possible. There's a insistent, insistent automaton, which is certainly a thing. I'm going to Tranquil Scholar and see what we get. Deadly, that's pretty cool. Do I want to give it to the Devotee? I guess so. And I will not play shifted. So very interesting kind of setup for that interface. I'm not sure how much I like it yet. Ancient lore, cool. So this looks like a big Combray deck, which is interesting. Just like a lot of empower. I imagine they have like mystics and things like that. Mystic ascendant. Uh, I'm gonna choose non-power and see if we can't find like an even-handed golem or Kyphus or something. Random non-power. Hmm. Well, not exactly what I wanted, but not the worst. I'm going to... I'll attack with the Devotee. See if my opponent does anything. And then we'll just play Akaria and... Pass the turn. Hold up the safer turn. I could have played Insistent Automaton. But I kind of like leaving back a deadly unit. Ah, our opponent's sitting on something. Let's go ahead and use Akaria. Do I do anything else? I think I just attack here, and again, pass the turn, just hold up the safer turn. Passage of Eons. Interesting. I'm gonna return the Trinkle Scholar. Passage of Eons. How rude. Well, I can still do this. Immediately give it to probably the Instant Automaton. Endurance, okay. So we make that a 4-5 Endurance, return this, and then pass. They can attack in with the 6-6, six six, but I can uh, actually attack, like I can block it now. Oh, they just have Martyr's Chains and I lose immediately. Cool. That's a fun card. <laughs> uh, well, this is the problem, we can't actually run a market because we are only even cards. Man, we really could not find an even-handed Golem or a Kyphus, huh? Just kind of curious what we have. Another Automaton. Looks like that will be the game. Got a lot of cool abilities on that thing, but... Eh, it's not gonna do enough, 
so at this point we can just scoop up the cards and thank our opponent for a good game. Well, this one's a little bit nicer in some ways in that we have all of our top end. However, we have literally none of our ramp, no two drops at all. That's really, really dicey. Uh, we are on the draw. I'm still going to redraw this. Hopefully we can find something that's got a mix of both, unlike last time. Just need some more of our actual top end. We need those Kyphases. This one has some stuff. I mean, we've got Sheriff Marley, we've got the Automaton. Might be able to find something with a Seek Answers. And of course, Trailmaker is really important. I feel like we always need to have some kind of 2-drop here. I'd love to get the Even-Handed Golem itself. That would be particularly nice. I don't want to be stuck not ever drawing the extra 2 cards, which is the whole reason why we built this deck. <laughs> this will do the trick. We'll just go for more Justice. We've got the Akarias, so we do want to have a lot of justice in the deck, and we don't really need a lot of extra time. Okay. So we attack first here, see if they do anything. When they don't, I'm just going to go ahead and Sheriff Marley. We don't want to Burden Bearer Wisp and return the Trailmaker to our hand. Like, that's not doing anything for us yet. Looks like our opponent might be in trouble. No, alright. Yeah, so there's some kind of Rakano aggro deck, and they maybe just had a little bit of a stumble on their power early on. Elder's Feather. Cool. Ooh, there's some options that we have here. Thinking about playing the Tranquil Scholar and buying it back. We need to get Onslaught for that, so I'm going to attack. Just see what they do first. Look inward. And what abilities are we looking at today? Endurance. Um, is that kind of our burden bearer, or would we rather have it on automaton? I think we'd much rather have it on automaton because I'm very likely to be trading this right now. And sure, we'll just return that. If we're not doing this stupid combo, then we're not really living, right? Like, this is really slow, it's not particularly effective, like, there's a lot of better things that we could be doing, but that's just gonna be the way that every even-handed golem deck is, and I wouldn't want it any other way, I hope that that deck stays that way. Double damage and lifesteal, and they're just gonna throw it away. I mean, they get a lot of life. It's interesting. And then they scoop. Okay. Well, <laughs> sometimes you just get a freebie. And now we've got perfect balance again. One win, one loss. Ah, yes, all things perfectly in balance. One and one, perfectly even. Uh, let's go ahead and redraw this though, because ugh. need those early game cards that we talked about. Okay, this is fine. So you just Combray Insignia. And get Nakaria down pretty quickly. We'll just go for the devotee. Hmm. I mean, we can go Trailmaker and then we can play both in a turn. Alternately, we can play Akaria next turn, use it. We're gonna just play Akaria. Ah. Some kind of an Elysian Pledge deck. We've seen a lot of these recently. Um, there were some in like the recent tournament ECQ. Face judgment. But yeah, we'll just stick to our plan. Attack in for one. Play our depleted power. And hopefully, we're going to be looking to draw into some of the bigger units in the deck here in a second. We're really close to having enough justice that Akaria itself is a threat too. And it's nice to have the Vanquisher's Blade, because if they're running Glasshopper, it's pretty likely that that's like... Okay, well, it's an Imperial... I mean, it might not have been the Imperial Loyalist, but I was thinking like Moonstone Vanguard. Um, maybe something like if they were going to be this deck, then like Silverwing, uh, the 6-3 that becomes invulnerable, stuff like that. I'd love to play the Crest so that we get closer to the correct amount of Justice. 
but I really don't want to let our opponent have this sticking around, because they can just copy it. A lot of the times the plan with this deck, when I've seen it, is to go ahead and like mirror image this and get a lot of value out of it, and I don't want to let it stick around. I'm not a fan of that myself. Next turn we can be attacking with a 6-5 Akaria. And they won't be able to have... Oh no, Silverwing can come down this turn if they have undepleted power, so hopefully they don't have the ability to do that. I did think about holding on to the Vanquisher's Blade for that, but... Something gets you right. Not yet. Hmm. Could be Palace. Could be a lot of things. Give me a Kyphus. A Svetcha. Okay, I'll actually accept Svetcha. Svetcha is fine. Do the trick. Do we play it shifted? Does it matter? Um, I don't think it matters all that much. Shift is one of those abilities that's going to take a long time to really feel out and decide if we're doing it right or not. And I feel like I'm going to lose to it a lot where like it's just a ticking clock on board and you know that you're dead when they could become unshifted. And I'm also going to um, end up with a lot of times where I win off of that a lot because my opponent plays it uh, when they should just be playing the unit and it doesn't do anything for a few turns and I can win that way. So they just polymorphed it. That's interesting. I think I'm willing to just slam. Alright. And... Svetcha. Now any Justice We units are, we draw are great. We can use the Burden Bearer Wisp to put Svetcha back into our hand and do it again. Not that that's super likely or necessary, but hey. If we're gonna be doing dumb crap, we should be doing dumb crap. Ah, there it is. Hello. So this is interesting. I could attack so we get a silence. I kind of like just using just an automaton to get it back and playing the Sheriff Marley. Mercy isn't really my strong suit. There we go. How do you deal with a 10-10 Aegis opponent? It might be by playing a bunch of 6-3 flyers that can't be killed. <laughs> That's a pretty good answer. Yep, there's Palace. Not out of the market, though, it didn't look like. Sure. Do I want to use the ability first? I don't think I care that much. I'm going to go after the palace. Maybe shouldn't. They're at more life than it looks like, though. They're basically at 17. Yeah, chump block. But I do get Svetcha back. Peace for all so we can still block and kill the 9-9. Nine -nine. Unless they have something really spicy up their sleeves. We haven't seen an even-handed golem yet. I'd really like to see one in these games. Our opponent is just going straight on in with it, huh? Okay, well... I'll block with this. I know that it does give them a little bit of a better choice, like they can hit the 3-3 three, three with the Vanquisher's Blade and the Svetcha. Yeah. But I'm like, I don't want to walk into a random Finest Hour or something and it protects from that. Okay. Good thing I did. All of our Justice units are huge now, and that's pretty big. It's also really important to us that this died, because now they can't gain the life. Now they're back to 12, and I can just start smacking them in the face again. The shadow has come for you. Something sure. Hmm. 
Hmm. What did they get out of the market? They might have gotten another palace. It's not a black market. They're allowed to do that. So... Let's go ahead and use that. I feel like just swinging with everything, even if we lose the 2-1 to the 1-3, that's fine. Force them to make some choices here and do some blocks. And I'll not use this. It is a maze, so we don't have to. This is its own reward. We'll just keep them under constant pressure now and try and go wide around this. That Sheriff Marley is a threat that they're going to have to answer fast. Eileen. Also not out of the market. Oh wow, they're slamming in, huh? Okay, uh, I am going to draw a non-power card, please. I would really like something good. Tranquil Scholar as a 14-14 seems okay. Hmm. So if we attack with everything, the 1-1 one, one just gets eaten, but they do take 4. That feels still pretty useful, actually. They'll take a little less damage, which makes a lot of sense. Deadly would be really nice here. I do not mind Berserk. That is certainly not bad either. They get their Svecha. It's gonna be close. It's gonna be really close. Yeah, there's the second palace. That's what I figured they got out of their market. That Eileen was a great draw. Oh, they're putting it there? Okay. I mean, it does give endurance. I thought they might put it on Eileen to protect it. Because Eileen's a problem for us right now. It's the only thing that can block Sheriff Marley. Nothing can block our 14. So I was kind of expecting it to go there. Because they did that, and they could have blocked the Tranquil Scholar, too. Ooh, very good draw. <laughs> That's kind of funny. Um, I don't know that there's a way for us to get out of this. Migo face. Chump block. I mean, we do get another attack here, and they just block everything, so they kind of threw that game away. They could have just... That's interesting. So they could have just not blocked one of the 1-1s one and let it through, and then they could have chump blocked the 14 again, and they definitely could have lived there, so I'm surprised they did that. This is why sometimes you've got to take the shot, right? Your opponent can make a pretty big mistake. And that was definitely one of them. Nice little upgrade, too. All right, we will be back for game four. Well, here we are. We have finally found the even-handed golem, and we're redrawing <laughs> because we don't have enough power. There we go. All right, definitely got to keep this one. I want to see it. You want to see it. I want to see it. Let's see it. We're going to go with Trailmaker into Sheriff Marley still, though. Almost start. certainly. Ooh, and our opponent's on a fast hand. Um, maybe the Devotee, but, eh, I don't know. Another Sheriff Marley. Well, I take a second Marley. 
I think not on that one. If we end up losing, like, Trailmakers and Initiates, then we don't necessarily have enough to even play the Marley, let alone play, like, Sword of Unity and use it. I often talk about District Infantry and how incredibly weak it is, but it's really strong on turn one. On turn one, that's where it's... That's the problem that I have with it, is it's not good any time else, but it's scary here. It can deal a lot of damage out of nowhere. It does need backup, though, so not having a turn two play was nice for us. Hopefully they don't immediately have the Warhelm and answer. Okay, cool. Very, very sick hand from our opponent. It's gonna be a tough one. Um, I'm going to block it, I think. I could play Sheriff Marley instead. This is tough. Marley does stop the 3-3, and then I can just trade it off next turn. It's already got the damage, no matter what. Like, it's going to have gotten the Warcry. It's already gotten plus 4, plus 2 in charge. Like I said, our opponent has just hit exactly the nut of what you want in this style of deck. Having the Warhelm and the Highland Sharpshooter is hard to do. It's not super likely, but when you do it, it's really, really sick. Them. Getting them, like, that early anyways. Ticking Granadin. Oh, wow, they're really all in. That's kind of good for us because it shows that Sword of Unity is going to be insane here. I think I might just slam that, honestly. I don't want to do this. So I could even handed Golem, Ikaria, and then next turn Sword of Unity. I think I might do that instead. Wait one more turn. And then have some other blockers, and I'll be able to attack with this at that point. I could play in the Devotee, and then we can actually use the Sword of Unity. Blink and you'll miss it. So yeah, I'm going to do that. See if we dodge the massive charge unit that they have. Yeah, I'm definitely willing to block these. Sure, it's a fair bit of damage, but we're at nine. Like, they don't have triple torch in their hand to get us. And now, we can indeed dance. 7-7 seven, seven, Lifesteal Overwhelm Aegis is going to be pretty good against a hyper-aggressive Arcano deck like this. Did they get the Warcry yet? Ah, there it is. On Hojin! Oh, sick. Very, very good draw for our opponent. Well, that's pretty solid. Uh, I'm willing to trade this block here. Let the 9-6 hit me. It's unfortunate. But with Marley, we can gain life past that, and we'll be okay. Uh, play a second Marley. We've got a lot of options. The option is to do this. And then play another one. They're going to want to hold back Hojin really quickly here and actually trade with Marley. Choose a card in our market. Ha ha! I do not have one, friend. Oh, they're just gonna throw it in. Well, hell. Uh, I'm super happy about this. Because now they just throw it away and we still have our 7-7. Seven, seven. Yeah, that's just the scoop. Sweet. Aha! The advantage of not having a market when everybody's trying to run their market hate cards. <laughs> All right, here we are for the finals. Uh, double Tranquil Scholar, even-handed Golem. We've got all the gas. All of the best cards in our deck. The number one best card, in fact. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and pass like this. Probably lead with even-handed Golem. I could now Devotee and then just slam two things next turn, though. That might be a better idea. And if I play it shifted, then they can't kill it. They can't, like, just torch it and stop me from having my turn four. I could also wait, play even-handed Golem, and hold up uh, safe return, too. That's an option. I think I prefer doing this, though. Let's see what we get. Aegis. Okay. 
kind of like this, then. Ooh, and another golem. Alright, here we go. We're starting to get some gas going here. We don't have a Kyphus yet, which would be really nice. Copper conduit. Sure. We may be able to draw one, though. Vanquisher's Blade. Very interesting. I'm just going to pass the turn and hold up safe return. Because I get the feeling they're going to try and give that killer. Hmm. Alright, I'm going to return this. I want a 4-4 golem that I can draw more cards off of. Or 3-3, three, three, rather, sorry. Hmm. We can assist an automaton, return the other one again. It's an option. We've got our Honor the Fallen, but nothing really to do with it yet. Now, yeah, we'll just go ahead and return this one. We want to try and find Kyphus. Especially with the Honor the Fallen in our hand. Mysterium Orb, cool. We can actually start getting in for a little bit of damage here too, which is nice. And works out very well with our Onslaught. Sure. Another Automaton. Considering we have one in hand, and we're drawing so many cards, I don't really want to do that. I think... Hmm. Hmm. Okay, I'm gonna return the even-handed golem. I have a lot of cards in hand. I kind of need to not play the golem or we're just going to be discarding things, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah, we'll end up with ten cards. So we'll just be discarding. It's not super advantageous. I don't mind just playing Tranquil Scholar. Seeing what we get. Reckless. Excellent. Let's not do anything. <laughs> Crap. Ooh, Sandglass Juggernaut. This is a cool combo. So this is Endurance Overwhelm, and normally it exhausts itself when it comes into play, so it can never block. But with Mysterium Orb, uh, your Sentinels all get Endurance and Overwhelm. So now that it's like re reckless and invulnerable to damage, it can actually do things. Our opponent's attacking with a 3-3. This feels ill-advised, because that means that we can get rid of our Reckless unit and not actually just throw it away. I guess that... Sure. They can kill these in such a way that they leave the Reckless unit around. Still, I get to use some advantage out of it. Let's go ahead and... Hmm. Just even-handed Golem again, I guess. And Vanquisher's Blade. Well... Thankfully, invulnerable to damage is not invulnerable to death. And we just get to slam in here with a massive even-handed golem. I don't think our opponent's recovering from this one. Oh, yeah, they didn't even have the influence to gain the life off of Amber Waste. I didn't even notice. Oof, duh. They need a lot of really good things. Yeah, this, that isn't nearly enough. And... We can just keep doing this all day. Sure, I could just Vanquisher's Blade and stuff, but I want to draw cards. I want to try and find a Kyphus. That's what I was looking for. Down to one. I'm 
more than a little bit toying with my opponent, so I apologize for that. I just wanted to see if I could actually find Kyphus. We didn't manage to get the ideal wins. Still looking like we're going 4-1. and one. Even now, I don't think our opponent can actually solve the problem that we've presented to them here. Not when we have Vanquisher's Blade in our hand. Yeah. And slam it. Cool. So this deck operated a lot better than I expected. This deck just definitely does not seem like it should be able to do this. I even got an achievement for even-handed golem. This is a lot of fun though. I definitely enjoyed this. Uh, you could maybe try and run as like some more even costed cards. You could try and run like a uh, Martyr's Chains in this too, because it does do a lot of ramping. I think that if you're going to try and do even-handed golem, that is the idea. That's roughly what we did, is we used a lot of the ramp cards to kind of jump from 2 to 4 and from 4 to 6, so we don't have as big of a disadvantage. It's a lot of fun. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I do, and I'm back to making regular weekly videos now that set 6 is out. Sorry for the little bit of a break there, just needed a little bit of one. Go on a bit of vacation with my wife and some different things, and of course... Big shout out to all the people who stuck around through this and for the people that do subs and patron dollars and all that kind of stuff. Check out all the things that I do. We just started a podcast that's Rough Cuts. It's available anywhere that fine podcasts are. You can uh, check out Rough Cuts Cast on Twitter. It's something that I'm doing with my wonderful friend, The Boyks. So I started a podcast as well recently. Lots of cool new things coming up. And next weekend, we are going to be doing the Pickle Challenge for Charities. So the weekend of the 18th and the 19th. So all the way from Thursday until Sunday, I'm going to be doing charity streams every single day, raising money for Doctors Without Borders. You should definitely check it out. It's going to be fantastic. We've raised about $50,000 so far already over the years. Uh, last year, I believe we raised about $20,000 on the spring version of this event, so I don't think we can beat that this time, but I'm hoping that we can raise a bit of money for charity, and I'll be excited to see you. In any case, have a wonderful time, and good luck in all of your games in Eternal, everybody.